Faith is the ability to believe the story that you tell about your future. And all, all people do this. Everyone has faith. We think that people don't have faith, but they do have faith. They tell a story about their future and they believe it. They tell a story that I am lazy, I am not understanding this, I am miserable, I am not intelligent and I don't deserve it. And they believe this story in their future also. They have a lot of faith in it. And that's the reason all their energies flow towards that future. You see, the future is unconstructed. It's not real. It doesn't exist yet. And it cannot be experienced right now. And yet, instead of creating whatever they want in the future, people are busy creating whatever they can't. Somehow people have faith more in what they can't than what they want. This is the biggest problem that people face. Despite having a human body, despite having the creative capacity to create whatever you want, despite having the two powers that are your birthright, which is to choose your story and character and to bring it into existence by just one pulsation. Just one pulsation of wanting it puts it on your future timeline. And the faith that you show in what you can't, if you can shift that faith to what you can and what you want, then you're going to have a huge difference. Just shift your faith from what you can't to what you want. Can't to want. Okay? So, people even hesitate to think what they want because their faith in what they can't is so big that they hesitate to even think about what they want. They don't have five minutes to stop from the crazy routine, get up and think about what they want. Isn't that crazy? I find it amazingly ridiculous that human beings have to be like this. Now, when you look at your future, you see that there are a lot of things not really what you want, but it's full of what you can't. And are you okay with that? What does that make you when you're okay with that? Definitely not a hero. Definitely not a story worth listening to. The story of what you can't is so big and you listen to it so much and you have so much faith that you freeze. You just wait and hope. Now you have hope also that this will just not be as bad as you think that it is. But it will be. There are so many problems. People get into relationships and within a few minutes into the relationship itself. Actually, maybe not minutes. They're still in the nasha for the first few hours. In a few days itself, they start feeling, have I made a mistake? Or they start understanding that this is not going to be fun. That's not when they pivot. When they say, oh, that's not when they say, oh, this is not working, I'm sorry, I'm finished, bye-bye. They go and have children with the same people whom they don't like. And now they can't pivot because they have children. And still they look at the future of now, not just themselves, but also the children. And it's so stressful for both of them that they decide to just hold on to each other. And just avoid the pivot that they're supposed to make. Now you're waiting for fate. You're waiting for the karma to get over. This karma was created entirely by you. It's called Kriyaman karma. And some people, they change 
their whole ability to create a future they want to feeling that injustice has been done to them and that is something that they can be angry about and they can just say words to put down the other person and once they say those words they release some sasta nasha called serotonin if you go and sit in the sunlight every day for at least an hour you will have enough serotonin and you won't have to do this sasta nasha so finally the future that you fear is the one that you have faith in you the future that you want that you desire is not the one that you have faith in people go and join a job after one month of joining the job they understand that this is not what i want to do in life but they have too much faith in what they can't i can't be an entrepreneur i can't learn to earn money without selling my time this is where people get stuck and then it continues and as it continues they become hopeful that this will end with what with a better job they don't understand that every job is going to be the same it's you selling your time no matter how much you're being paid you're selling your time you don't have your freedom you can't go out in the forest and get some nice experience in nature on a weekday it's not possible that shouldn't that's what is actually bothering you about your job but because you have a lot of faith in what you can't you say this can't be changed and then you sit there then you do some courses here and there somebody makes you a promise that they can help you with this then you go and do that course but whatever is supposed to be done in the course even if they put it down for you step by step you won't be able to do it because your faith in what you can't is too high the faith in what you want is too low nobody can build this for you faith is something we naturally have it's called shraddha where you apply your shraddha is the most important thing if are you applying the shraddha in the service of what you can't or the service of what you want same thing happens with disease and this is how people die okay finally they got the bad relationship they got the bad job and now they just are waiting for the bad disease and it happens because obviously there's no knowledge about health and it's very easy to spoil your health nowadays even though the human body is super resilient adaptive survived ice ages and uh, crossed across continents and inhabited even uninhabitable places of the earth now we don't have health and the reason for this is we are not getting enough sunlight and we are not getting enough nature grounding on our bare feet this is the main reason okay but this is something now with your job and your relationship you you can't do it because if you decide to go to your forest then your spouse will come along and your in-laws will also come along and then you'll have to stay somewhere and full time you'll be looking after the kids and you'll never get to stand barefoot on the ground in nature and you won't be able to teach this to your kids also they they'll not understand that having faith is what creates your future which is what motivates you and where should you put your faith that's the important thing in a future that you want or into a future that you can't so there's no way you're going to get into nature get light get that feel somebody told me that they went trekking for 3 days and all of their health issues and ibs and everything is gone and i'm like it's because of the outdoors it will come back when you go back to your job and sure enough she went back to her job and she got it she got all her symptoms back because obviously what was supporting her health and improved it in 3 days is not present in the environment in which she is you can't get better in an environment 
in which you got sick. But all unhealthy people have great faith in the idea that they can't leave their environment. Even though they understand what I'm saying. That it's your environment making you sick. You can't get better in the same environment that made you sick, the same emotional environment, the same light environment, the same food environment, and the same electromagnetic environment that made you sick. Is not the en- environment which you can heal. If you add a few pills, a few injections, a few medical procedures, it still will not work. It doesn't matter if the medicine is Ayurveda or Western medicine. It won't work. Because at least in Ayurveda, people assume that you have a proper environment. That's when those books were written, when the environment was okay. And it was possible to change your environment. And people at that time had faith in what they want, not what they can't. That's why Ayurveda used to work. But now even that doesn't work. Because the the toxic environment can't be cancelled by some herb. It has to be cancelled by you moving out of that environment. There's no other way. But you have great faith in which, in that idea that you can't. So here you are with your bag of can'ts, neglecting the sky of wants that are actually there for you. You don't have any faith that you can make things better. And you'll never make things better. This all comes down to your character. A real heroic character has absolute faith in what they want, not in what they can't. And that's how they do it and they get it done. Every day I engage in this heroic faith. If you don't have this heroic faith, you're just going to get recycled because this is not what Shakti wants from any of us. She didn't produce this in us. This is our own ego and small understanding of the world. When we start going after what we want, we activate Kameshwari, which are the winds the values, the potential differences, the energy potential difference. There's potential difference in magnetism. There's potential difference in electricity. There's potential difference in every possible energy. There has to be a field of potential. This is called Kameshwari. Desire. That's the potential difference. Even atoms experience desire. Even The universe experiences desire. The empty space that we call the universe is not empty. It desires to become something else and it becomes it with faith. That's Kameshwari. We throw her out, okay? The Vayus. Wealth which flows towards us is Narayani. And it's the water element. It's also what nourishes us and takes care of us. But we reject her also. Because water needs a proper structure to flow. Otherwise it flows randomly in any way. And it's the same with money. If you don't create the structures for money to flow, it will not flow the way it's supposed to flow. And then you'll be always disappointed. And always under fear. Those who don't have money have fear. Somebody called me and was very angry with me and was saying that there's a, I have given you a big amount and nothing happened. And I I tried to tell him that you have to work for yoga to work. And actually I'm sorry for selling you that course because I didn't realize that you're not ready for it. So I'll correct this in my future. And stop writing stupid comments on my YouTube page because that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you've been a nightmare customer and you didn't put in the work that was required. 
And that's why you haven't gotten results. It's not because yoga doesn't work, it's because you didn't work. So please don't be this nightmare customer when you come to learn yoga. I don't want such customers. It's something I don't want and I have great faith that I'll get what I want. Well, what about you? How are you going to allow the money to flow to you? Where is the structure? You have to make a structure. And when you think about your future and you think about what, when, when you have faith in what you want, that creates the wonderful feeling of expansiveness and this will allow you to experience rays of divinity that come into your future when you create your future and you leave it out there and you leave, you have faith that it will happen but you don't have any knowledge of how it will happen rays of grace start coming from the sky. This is Rashmi Devi. This is quite detailed in the Rashmi Mala Stotra, which was written by Parshurama. It's coded into this. This is one of the lessons there. That you... you when your eye gets activated, And you start seeing the future, the rays of grace will fall upon it and it starts to be supported because of your faith. And then there is Bhuvaneshwari. That shows where you are, what environment you are in, where you are standing in. And when you have faith that that environment can change, the ground you are standing upon itself changes. You will come into a new environment. Your environment is Bhavaneshwari. How have you maintained her? If you haven't maintained a beautiful environment for yourself, you are insulting the goddess Bhavaneshwari. So in every way as a jiva you have so many powers but you don't use them. Instead, you abuse them. Don't do that. And when all this is in place, and when Narayani is flowing in every place, giving you energy, creating a potential difference along with the Vayu, which is Kameshwari, when Kameshwari and Narayani come together, they create Vajreshwari which is basically the lightning in your body. Did you know that the total amount of potential in your body is close to 70,000 uh, megavolts or something like that? It's, I'm not sure of the unit. Okay. But it's equivalent to lightning, the amount of energy that you have. And I've seen some Chinese masters on the internet light up a light bulb with the hands just with this electricity that's inside them and I've seen yogis create lightning when I was in the mountains with their meditation it happened with me too there was lightning inside my body such a high potential and the body itself transforms into a different kind of body a body that has no death, no aging, and requires no food. That's the higher visible part of Shakti. Everyone wants that Shakti path without preparing the other Devis. They directly want Vajrashwari. They come to me and say, can I rise my Kundalini? Yes, the Kundalini is lightning in your body. But it cannot be risen and it cannot be made. 
Yes, there are great powers in yoga, but the first step is to lose faith in what you can't and have faith in what you want. And when that happens, Shakti dances. She rejoices that somebody, her child, has taken cognizance of her. Please ask Shakti. Make a prayer. It's written in the Sandhya Lahiri. You just pray to her. Ask her for a small portion of her grace. Just make a prayer and say, Can you please give me a small portion of your grace? So that I can come out of all of these things and have faith in you. Give me a small portion. Let me have her. Like Jesus also said in the Bible, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed in your future, you would be able to move mountains. And it's the same. Ask her for a mustard seed size faith at least. Please give it to me. Beg her. When you beg it to Bhavani, say, when you say, Oh Bhavani, dear Bhavani, Mother Bhavani, Ma Bhavani, please give me a button size faith at least. Give me a button size grace so that I can have faith. Button size grace. Button sized grace is all you need from her. But when you say Bhavani itself, and when you ask with a sincere heart, she will already shower you. She will take the crowns of the God and shower you with grace. Okay? So those who don't have faith, please ask for grace. Reconnect to Shakti. Don't be full of your own ego that your whole life is run by you. Nothing here is run by you. You don't have to struggle so much. But you need to have faith in what you want. It doesn't take struggle. You already have faith in what you can't. Shift sides now. Do it today. Because if you don't do it today, you know you'll get what you can't. The biggest misunderstanding I've seen uh, is yogic therapy. People think yoga can be used to overcome their mental problems. Or they think yoga can be used to overcome their physical health problems. But really... These are things that that Patanjali sees as obstacles to yoga. He lists eight mental problems that are obstacles to yoga, and then he lists one, uh, and then he lists health as a problem, as the ninth problem, physical health as the ninth problem to overcome before you can learn yoga. These are obstacles to yoga. They cannot be yoga therapy when health itself is an obstacle. Bad health is an obstacle to yoga. So, if you want good health, all you have to do is stop living unnaturally. We wear too many clothes. We have all sorts of toxic light coming into our photosensitive body. And we eat every kind of chemical possible. And then you smoke and drink on top of that. So, when we do things like this, we are going to be very sick. Not to mention the toxic emotions that we indulge in, the petty feelings because of a small story that we indulge in. This also creates a very limited timeline in which you view things. People are so concerned about their immediate feelings of anger, hate, jealousy, and fear. But they don't understand that life is a marathon. And there will be ups and there will be downs, and you need not take either of them seriously. When we practice yoga, we're trying to really reach an understanding of who we really are as the immortal jiva. Our consciousness is never extinguished. And this is something that we need to know. It does not depend on the body. 
It exists outside, it's formless and not made of material. This is something that we need to experience in yoga and you you cannot imagine how liberating that is. And everything that you see is like a movie and then you want to have a good movie. So you have a good movie. Yoga gets into the understanding of karma, what exactly our story is and how we get to shape our story 30 days into the future. 30 days into the future is already shaped. We can't influence it much, but we can definitely influence how we feel about it. So those who have control over their emotions and those who have good habit of getting enough sun, following a circadian rhythm, going to sleep, who have hormonal balance, who are avoiding all the things that cause cancer and diabetes and all of the modern diseases, such a people are qualified to learn yoga. Otherwise, it's a big problem. Even not having enough money is a problem because it distracts you from yoga. It brings up feelings of fear, inadequacy, and you won't be able to relax and enjoy. Nobody can tell you how much is enough money, but you need to have enough so that your basic duties in this world towards your family and towards society can be fulfilled. This is not possible without money. So people who haven't mastered making money having great relationships and great health, can't even begin on the journey of yoga. So many people are misleading yoga aspirants by telling them that yoga can be used for therapy, that yoga can be used for manifestation, yoga can be used for making wealth. This is all wrong. This is not yoga. Yoga is the realization of the self and then the realization of the Divine Mother, then the realization of Ardhanari, and then the realization of Shiva. After that, you can really enjoy the game that is unfolded by the whims of Shakti. And you can ride on these waves, these waves of beauty, as Shankaracharya puts it, they're called Saundarya Lahiri. And you can ride on these waves. You will have every kind of delight that you can't even imagine. Then what happens is a very beautiful event where we are satisfied with our body and mind and our soul. We feel so fulfilled that we can really desire to live for thousands of years. That is what yoga is all about. How does one begin? First note if you have any of these problems. If you have emotional issues, it's probably imbalanced dopamine. So go outside as naked as possible and get a lot of sun on your body. Turn your body, tanned in every area because your whole body is photosensitive. So. You should also become even more sensitive. You should start getting affected by artificial light. You should feel pain if you go into artificial light. And that's how you know to avoid it. Otherwise, people have become so insensitive because all their sensory neurons are dead. And that is why they're not able to feel anything. So, getting that sunshine for at least two or three hours a day, all over your body, every part needs it. Whatever you cover up, that place is not going to be healthy. So as much as possible, expose yourself. A lot of people have UTI, a lot of people have stomach issues, a lot of people have erectile dysfunction and so many other problems. They all get solved with sunlight. People having bad breath, all you have to do is open your mouth and look at the sun and it will get solved. People having hearing issues, tinnitus, all you need to do is show your ears to the sun every day for an hour. People having myopia and other eye issues, all you need to do is get sunlight in your eyes. You don't have to directly look at the sun, 
but you can look 30 degrees away at the sky and then your eyes will start getting better in days not months not years people with diabetes all you need to do is get sun and avoid that blue light which creates the diabetes and so many frequencies of light even according to who are said to be carcinogenic I found all of this happening with my students and they just, all they had to do was stop getting artificial light. Some of them did it. Some of them don't take me seriously. And so they still suffer. And so they will never know what yoga is, what they came to me for and paid money for. They won't be able to get because they don't know what yoga is. They think yoga doing mantras is going to be effective when they don't have the full brain function. So many neurotransmitters are going wrong in their brain. The neuromelanin in their brain is depleted and it's dying. So all of the light sensitive activities, especially hormones are linked to light sensitive activities. I mean, hormones are linked to light sensitivity. If you lose your light sensitivity, or if you bathe yourself in negative light, which is not good for your health, you're going to have a really bad time. The whole world has switched over to LED and they think they're doing something eco-friendly, saving electricity. But those LED bulbs are really bad. The incandescent bulbs were bad enough to create so much bright light at night and confuse the body. And now LED bulbs with a flicker and LED screens with a flicker is driving people crazy. People are not normal. They don't have the courage that they had even when they were a kid. They're so messed up today. Just because they don't follow proper light discipline. And then exercise. Don't you think exercise is important? Every day go out in the sun and sweat. You lose inflammation in your body because protons come out through your sweat and they leave the body. Drink a lot of water. Because protons come out when you pee. And make sure that you're not overeating. When you get out in the light, you don't need that much food. You need very less food and you'll be able to maintain your figure very easily. We also need cold water baths. Stop having hot water baths and bathe in only cold water and bathe for as long as you can bear until you start shivering. And then you'll see within a few days that you start to get muscles even without exercising because it grows testosterone. Men will wake up with an erection every day when they start having cold water baths. And it's also really good for so many other functions in your body. It protects you against the radiation-filled environment in which we live. And if you keep eating proton-rich food and deuterium-rich food, like fruits, vegetables, have a lot of deuterium, so we should have them in limited quantities. But a lot of people think eating a lot of fruit and vegetables is going to help their health. All it does is increase the amount of deuterium inside your cells, and then the mitochondria can't use that water. It starts to um, diminish in its function. And what are... What are electron-rich foods? The fats, primarily animal fats like butter, ghee, the fat that is there in meat, fatty fish, and the yolks of eggs. And coconut oil, of course. Any saturated fat is going to make you rich with electrons. Doesn't matter if you're vegetarian or a non-vegetarian. The only supplement that people might need is vitamin K2, which vitamin K2, MK7, which creates, uh, uh, which removes calcium from your, from the parts that are not supposed to have calcium and sends it back to the bones. Like for example, your arteries, it removes calcium from your arteries. But even that is not necessary if you're getting enough sun. I don't think you need to take any other supplements. The more water you drink, the more magnesium you will form in your body. 
and you will not have aches and pains and that's it it's just a few simple things if you follow it for a month you'll start becoming healthy only then your mind can open to learning about karma learning about yoga learning about jiva learning about shakti learning about ardhanari learning about shiva these are the things that yoga is meant to teach you and you enter a state where you stop using language to understand things this is called nirvikalpa samadhi language causes illusion we all of us live in a language world we say my house my wife my husband my father my mother and by using these things we are forgetting who and what is in front of us there are immortal jivas these are not your father mother and anybody your father and mother are shiva and shakti and everybody else are just jivas who came out of shakti doing a kind of crazy uh, fulfilling dance here but it's anything but fulfilling right now people are always fighting with each other they're just not happy with each other because they've been taught a whole lot of wrong story about the uh, mortality of their body then the futility of their life do you really think that your life is futile then why do you why do your cells want to live so much that intelligence is where you got to tap into not into philosophical empty discussions about the meaning of life the meaning of life is what your cells are doing they are hungry they are charged they have a desire which is almost a sexual desire to exist they fight for their existence but you're not aware you don't know what's happening in your own body so that's the reason that people are sick they don't relate well with each other because the stories that they tell about who they are and who other people are are very limiting and not attractive these are not attractive stories so please start following the discipline that your body requires start following the discipline that your mind requires throw your dependence on language and try to use your senses and feel and see who is in front of you you'll find that everybody is just dancing waves of energy their body is just dancing waves of energy it's just shakti everywhere pure shakti and you are in the middle of her as a consciousness every jiva is a shiva and shakti even if she gives you a sideward glance not even fully looking at you even a sideward glance if you get your life becomes full of fortune and glory how when are you going to experience this not in your low states of energy low states of mind you're not going to experience the beauty the waves of beauty that surround you so if you really want to experience the waves of beauty that surround you then you need to follow the discipline that i've recommended it isn't very difficult all you have to do is switch off your lights switch off your phones and throw everything at 6:30 and sit and meditate on anything everything that you feel without using language the whole night just sit down don't talk to yourself you'll see how hard that is because language is kind of considered something that we we, we can't do without we use language as a shortcut to understand things but there are many levels of understanding if i tell you that this is a butterfly and it's called a monarch butterfly you're not going to understand much about the butterfly but if you actually watch it you'll understand how it breathes you'll understand how it flies how it's using the air about it you can feel what it feels this state of being is called dhyana focus absolute focus with all your senses on something can be a bottle of water you just focus on it you'll realize when you just call it a bottle of water you're not understanding what's happening with that water 
when sunlight is falling on it it's changing you're not able to sense it because your words have cut off your senses so all night after sunset sit and sense you will fall asleep pretty soon by 8:30 you'll be asleep you'll wake up again at 3:30 in the morning again don't start using words if you have diksha of a mantra then just chant only the mantra and see what's happening to your body go out and exercise as soon as the sun is out as naked as possible in the sun make arrangements instead of spending 2 lakh on a trip abroad spend that 2 lakhs raising the parapets of your terrace so that you can go be naked there and nobody can see you why do you not invest in this this is the biggest investment that you need for your health and so spending 30 lakhs 40 lakhs on your education can't you just raise the walls and get a bath tub so that you can dip in the cold water until you shiver and then come out of course you can you have to invest in your health and your family needs this investment too what if all of you became warriors who go to bed at night and wake up in the morning ready to do something what if you did something about the toxic environments in which you work and study called school and college and office what if you did something about that what if you talk to people first you have to experience how much better health you're having by avoiding the blue light and your brain will work to take take you out of corporate slavery or whatever slavery you know even if you're working in an ngo it can end up being slavery we just don't have the freedom to make any decisions about where you want to be located where you would rather be what time you would work you can't decide this your employer decides this and that's terrible it just takes a little brains to break free from these things a little bit of understanding of marketing and sales it's not that hard these are very simple things when your brain is working it's not rocket science you can even understand rocket science if your brain starts working i am backed on a study of machine learning and linguistics to understand why my students are not learning and finally it ended in a place called quantum biology to understand why they're not learning these are the things that prepare you for yoga when you understand these things before that what you're doing is not yoga Yes you may get some mantras from someone you might learn some breathing exercise from a youtube reel or you might learn some asanas in a yoga ttc course but this is not yoga okay yoga begins with yama and niyama and these are very important and misunderstood steps in yoga people think these are behavioral guidelines they're not they go much deeper than that it's what to stop and what to produce in your mind to make the right energy to bring your body into asana <coughs> asana means seat so that your body is ready to seat the energy that is required for yoga you bring alignment in your body and you bring comfort and calm not stress in your body and then begins pranayama it's a set of breathing practices eight breathing practices all of them have to be done air is taken not only into the lungs but also into the stomach and expelled through the mouth cleaning up your stomach as well and air is swallowed and breathed swallowed and breathed and held in the body for as long as possible and then released this is pranayama there are many ways to do it eight ways to do it and all eight are important they work on different aspects of your neurology your hormones your mind but they all have to be done outdoors in the sun not indoors in a blue lit yoga studio that just doesn't make sense having a toxic yoga mat doesn't make sense sit on the bare ground like the yogis used to do connect yourself to the earth and start taking energy from there and 
there are asanas but there are only 64 asanas that are important in yoga the rest of the asanas are just gymnastics they're not really yoga so there's 64 important asanas which create certain flow of prana in the body prana is primarily got from the sun next is got from breath and last from food the food prana but now people get most of the prana from food zero from their breathing and zero from the sun so they're in really bad shape and they have to eat a lot now because their only source of prana is food isn't it miserable after pranayama comes pratyahara in pratyahara this is defined as a withdrawal of the senses but it's actually dropping of language it is not withdrawal of the senses when you drop language then you start being a part of the flow and the game of shakti and her energy and when you start participating in it when you start admiring it when you start noticing it she notices you and when that happens you get something called dharana and in dharana you are part of the flow dhara means stream you are part of the stream there is nothing more for you there is no decision fatigue that you have to make every day low level decision fatigue high level decision fatigue you don't have to make decisions your body automatically starts making decisions and you can trust those decisions there's no need to second guess them when you have dharana after dharana comes dhyana and in dhyana you start realizing that there are no boundaries between you and anybody or anything and that leads to samadhi and there are two types of samadhi where you can create an artificial boundary called me and others and there is one where you create no boundaries and you see the continuum but both are fun and you can switch between both so there's nirvikalpa and savikalpa samadhi you can keep switching between these two where you can enjoy the role that you're doing on this earth you can enjoy the story that is happening but you can also enjoy how all of it is one screen on which everything is being played called shakti in samadhi you're able to create samyama where you start becoming one with whoever or whatever you choose whether to shakti shiva whatever this is a higher stage of yoga which is called mukti the last stage where you create deep samyama with whatever you choose and so then your individuality dissolves and you're no longer a human you become a siddha a maha siddha but this is not what people are looking for in yoga they're looking for all these fundamental things that i explained so i'm hoping that you'll learn these fundamental things and then you will listen or read this again listen to or if you come across it as an article read it again make a list and start implementing and when you get to the stage where you don't have physical mental issues then i can teach you some yoga and it will be my pleasure to teach you at that point because you won't have any problems you won't be coming here to solve problems you'll be coming here to learn about yourself and your creator wouldn't that be wonderful i think it would be i'm looking forward to teaching such people but meanwhile if you have any kind of queries questions etc I'm very approachable. You can approach me on WhatsApp. You can approach me on Instagram. Just ask questions and I'm happy to answer. Thanks for listening. Om Namah Shivaya.